So today let's try to measure the capacity of this jump starter power bank from Lidl. I already made a long video about it, but I forgot to measure the capacity or basically it didn't fit into the video because it was already about half an hour long and here's the accessories I showed already in the other video and this housing for it and here's the charger and now let's try to measure its capacity to see if it's really what it claims and as you can see it has several different ratings on it, several different capacities, because those capacities are in milliamp hours and those milliamp hour ratings don't really say anything about the energy in the battery unless you know at which voltage it's measured. Because the energy in milliwatt hours or watt hours stored in the battery is basically the charge in milliamp hours or amp hours times the average voltage or nominal voltage of the battery. It would be probably much better to give the capacity of a battery in watt hours because this really tells how much energy you can store in the battery. But instead of this, a lot of makers are using milliamp hours, which of course can get quite confusing, especially if you have batteries of different voltages. You can for example have a nickel metal hydride battery which is 2000 milliamp hours and a lithium ion battery which is also 2000 milliamp hours and it seems like there is the same energy in both batteries, but this is wrong. The thing is that the batteries have different voltages. So let's try to do the calculation. 2000 milliamp hours equals 2 amp hours and to get the energy in the battery you have to multiply the charge times the voltage and you get 2.4 watt hours for this nickel metal hydride battery in our example and the lithium ion battery in our example is also 2 amp hours but the voltage is 3.7 volts and 2 amp hours times 3.7 volts is 7.4 watt hours so this battery has much more energy in it compared to this battery it's only possible to compare batteries based on the charge if they have the same voltage and to know the energy you have to multiply the milliamp hours or amp hours the charge basically by the voltage, the average voltage of the battery, which is usually also the nominal voltage. Of course the voltage changes during the charging or discharging process, but you want to use the average voltage of the battery for the calculation. This is the average voltage the battery has during the discharge process. Initially it's a bit more and finally it's a bit less during the discharge process. And of course it gets even more confusing when you start putting batteries in series because this increases the voltage but not the charge. So let's use those batteries from our example and let's put two in series like this. So let's make this battery pack and it still is 2000 milliamp hours but 7.4 volts. The voltage doubles basically. And the energy in it is the charge times the voltage and you get 14.8 watt hours. Now let's try to see what happens if you take the same cells but put them in parallel. Like this. And now the charge of it is 4000 milliamp hours. Which seems strange because you still have the same batteries just arranged a different way and suddenly you get twice the capacity. That's weird. And that's why the milliamp hour rating is quite confusing. It doesn't really say the energy in the batteries, it really is just the charge. The thing is that you have double the charge, but if you put them in parallel, it doesn't multiply the voltage, so it's 3.7 volts, just like one cell. And when you multiply it, you come to the same energy. So as you can see the energy in the battery pack is the same no matter how you arrange the cells in it. But the charge is different every time and this makes it quite confusing. So that's why I think it's much better to give the capacity rating of the battery in watt hours. How it's actually done in any bigger batteries like electric car batteries or solar storage batteries or anything else. The milliamp hour rating is still fine if it's one cell, but once you put more batteries in a series, it's better to use watt hours because 
by putting batteries in a series, you still have the same capacity in milliamp powers or amp powers. And so it appears that putting batteries in a series doesn't really add anything. And the thing is that this power bank has four cells in a series, but they still use the milliamp power rating, which is quite crazy. And it's quite confusing as well. But they do it probably to just show a big number on it or to use the same rating as on other power banks, because general public doesn't understand what hours probably. So here's the battery pack in the power bank and it has four cells in a series and each cell is 3.2 volts, 3 amp powers, which is 3000 milliamp powers. But the crazy thing is that they give the rating as if the cells were in a parallel. The actual configuration of the cells in the battery is this, but they give the capacity rating in milliamp hours as if the batteries were like this. Which is quite crazy. But of course this gives the biggest number possible and it looks bigger and better. And when you open the power bank, the actual marking on the battery says 12.8 volts, 3000 milliamp hours, 38.4 watt hours. Which is basically this. And the cells are in series. And of course they have to be in series because they have to make about 12 volts to start the car. And the peak current of this power bank is 500 amps. Times 12 volts is 6 kilowatts. And it would be completely crazy to design a boost regulator for this power. Even if it had to run just for a couple seconds. So the only reasonable solution is to basically have such a battery pack that has this voltage already available without any conversion. So now you know what those markings mean. This is the actual capacity of the battery pack at this voltage. And this one is actually the theoretical capacity or charge on it if the cells were all in a parallel. But they are not in a parallel. And there is another marking which is at 5 volts. And this is for the USB output. And this is basically how much charge you can take from those USB ports. And of course the watt hour rating of the battery is just this number times this number. And that's this. And of course if you multiply those numbers, you get the same watt hour rating. And when you multiply those numbers for the USB port, 5 volts times 7000 milliamp hours or 7 amp hours, you get just 35 watt hours. A bit less than this. But this is probably because of the losses in the buck regulator. Because there is a circuitry that converts the 12.8 volts to 5 volts for the port. And of course if I took those numbers completely seriously, it would mean that the efficiency of the buck regulator would be 91%. Which is actually quite possible. So let's try to fully charge the battery and let's do the measurements using my battery analyzer. And I will actually do two measurements. I will measure how much charge and energy goes straight from the battery, from those terminals probably. And I will also measure how much charge and energy goes from the USB port. And my battery analyzer can actually measure both amp hours and watt hours. So let's measure the bare battery and verify those numbers. And let's also measure the USB port and verify those numbers. And before the capacity measurement, of course, I have to fully charge it. So let's charge it using this charger that comes with the power bank. Let's plug it in and it's charging. So it's charging and the voltage of the battery goes slowly up. And now it seems to be fully charged and it no longer blinks and the voltage doesn't change anymore and here is the total voltage of the battery and if I divide it by 4, this is the voltage per cell. And this charging voltage per cell is lower than I expected. I expected something like 3.6 or 3.65 volts per cell. And so it seems that it tries to save the life of the battery by not charging it too much. And how it's balanced? This is the first cell, second cell, third cell, and the last cell. So this is not exactly what I call perfectly balanced, but when it was new, it was balanced much better. After I bought it, before charging it, it was balanced quite well, within 0.01 volt. 
That's weird. And if I unplug it from the charger and plug it back in, it's blinking. And it's no longer blinking. After a couple seconds, it stops. So I'm not really sure whether the charger actually balances the cells or whether it stops when the first cell reaches about 3.6 volts. That's weird. It seems like no balancing. That's a bit disappointing. And now let's measure the capacity of the battery. I originally planned to connect my battery analyzer to this output, but it's probably safer to use this cigarette lighter output, which goes via some protections. There is probably some protection circuitry which monitors the voltage of each cell and stops the discharge when the first cell reaches the minimum voltage. This is much safer than discharging it directly through this output because one cell can have much lower voltage than the other ones and it's not enough to monitor just the total voltage. I will basically plug this one in and a cable into this and the cable goes to my battery analyzer. So now it's connected to my battery analyzer via the cigarette lighter output and it's off of course. So let's press the button. Now it's on. Here's the voltage and let's discharge it at let's say 0.2C which is 0.6 amps for a 3000 mAh battery down to let's say 10 volts which is 2.5 volts per cell. But I hope it will terminate sooner by its protection if some cell reaches a lower voltage than the others. So it's now set to 10 volts. And now let's discharge it. And it's discharging. It's discharging the battery and the milliwatt hours are counting up. And the milliamp hours are also counting up now. And let's leave it discharging. And it's still discharging and the voltage is still over 12 volts. And the energy taken from the battery is 31.6 watt hours, which is most of the rating of the battery already. And amp hours, 2.4 something amp hours taken from the battery. So let's leave it discharging. And just one LED left on the indicator. And now the LED is blinking, so there is probably not much energy left, but it still runs. And the energy and amp hours. So now it stopped and it seems that the circuitry of the power bank shut down before it reached the 10 volt limit set in this analyzer. And the energy is 34 watt hours and the amp hours 2.6 something amp hours. It's a bit less than it should be but it's not that far. And here's the voltages of the cells after the discharge and now the imbalance seems a bit lower. Let's try to make one more cycle to see if it improves and if it also balances better this time. Now it's completely discharged and it's not possible to restart it. When I press the button it blinks and it doesn't turn on. So let's try to recharge it now and let's also see the charging current. Of course, the horrible connector with a poor contact. About 1.12 amps charging current. And if I try a different charger than the one supplied with the power bank, it's charging a bit faster. Well, again, the poor connector of my analyzer. But it's charging close to 2 amps. The charger that comes with the power bank is just one amp. But anyway, let's continue charging it using the original charger and then let's discharge it again. And let's also see how the balancing goes. So now it's charged again and let's measure the voltages of the cells. Now the voltages of the cells are slightly lower, but maybe this is because it was sitting a bit longer after the charge and there is still quite some imbalance. So let's try to discharge it via my battery analyzer once more through this 12 volt output and then I can test the USB output. So let's activate it and discharge it. So now it's discharged and the energy comes out as 34.21 watt hours, ever so slightly more than previously and 
The charge was 2.644 amperes or 2644 mA. Also, ever so slightly more than before. So let's charge it once more and this time let's try to discharge it through the USB port to see how much charge comes out of the 5 volt USB port. And it's charging now. So now it's charged again and the voltages of the cells are more or less the same as this. And now let's try to discharge it through the USB port and see how much charge and energy comes out. So let's plug it into the U-amp port and let's try to test it. Of course I have to turn it on. And here's the voltage of the USB port and let's discharge it at let's say one and a half amps. Down to let's say four volts or anything below the USB voltage because this is going to keep a constant voltage until the battery is completely discharged. So the discharge voltage doesn't really matter that much. And let's start the discharging. And it's discharging. The voltage dropped a bit, but this is probably not dropping on the back regulator. It's dropping on the resistance of the connector and the cable. So it's discharging at one and a half amps at the USB port, but this results in this current straight from the battery, about 0.67 amps. Of course the voltage of the battery is higher than the voltage of the USB port, so the current is lower at the battery, because of course it's a back regulator, it's not a linear regulator. If it was a linear regulator, of course the current would be the same at the battery terminals. But of course a linear regulator would be quite lossy. The energy that comes out in milliwatt hours or watt hours is affected by the voltage drops on the cables and connectors. Unlike the charge in milliamp hours or amp hours that comes out, which is not affected by this. Because basically the charge is just the time it takes to discharge times the current. But the energy is this times the voltage, and if some voltage drops on the cables, it skews the result. So the advantage of amperes or milliampers is that it's not skewed by the voltage drop of the cables and connections, and if you're measuring the bare battery, not the USB port, the measurement is not skewed by the internal resistance of the battery, which drops the voltage. Because every battery has some internal resistance, the more you draw from the battery, the more the voltage drops on the internal resistance. So if you're measuring the energy in the battery at a higher discharge current, it comes out as a lower energy. Because of course some energy is lost in the battery in its resistance. Of course even the charge in empowers is slightly skewed by the discharge current because there are some other inefficiencies in the battery. Batteries usually are less efficient at a higher discharge current and even the charge in empowers tends to be lower measured at a higher current. Of course both ratings of the battery are discharge rate dependent but the energy in what hours is dependent steeper on it than the charge in empowers. And this may be one reason to use empowers rather than what hours. And the LED is blinking now, so it's probably nearly discharged and it's already over 6000 mAh taken from the USB port. So the battery is now completely discharged and it's not possible to reactivate it now and the energy that came out is 31.52 watt hours and the charge 6209 mAh, hours, which is not that far from the advertised 7000. So the conclusion is that all four numbers that came out from the measurement are about 88 to 90 percent of what it should be. Which is kind of good enough and the reason it's lower than it should be is probably because the cells in the battery are not balanced very well. It basically charges the battery until the first cell reaches the full charge and the other ones are not yet fully charged and it discharges the battery until the first cell is discharged but the other cells still have some charge in them left. And it's a bit disappointing because it seems that it doesn't balance the cells or it balances them some weird way or maybe the cells are just pre-balanced from a manufacturer and then it just relies on the fact that they have a low self-discharge so it doesn't come out of balance and it all charges and discharges roughly the same way. 
I think they are pre-balanced, but not at a full charge. They are pre-balanced at maybe half charge state or something like this. I could try to manually rebalance them by charging them using a bench power supply. But let's leave it for another video. And here's my cat in a box. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And my patrons get early videos two days earlier. And I still plan to make a video about those Gucci USB chargers and maybe some good ones. And I also plan to test the 20,000 mAh power bank from Lidl.